Hey, it's Pamela. Welcome to my channel. Like and subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, okay. So, what I'm going to be talking about in this vlog has to do with the situation with my ex and what happened. I had said that there were developments and I'm gonna go over that, but I also wanna go over some red flags and stuff that were before, during, and I guess I could say after the relationship because this went on and on and on and on and on for way too long. I didn't expect to film today, so my hair is in a bun and you can see the five head out in all its glory. But to give a refresher on what happened, I had found out from my ex that he was dating a girl I thought was my friend and to give a bit of a backing this friend was around for over a decade I'm not talking about someone who had been in my life for a few months No, she was around for a very very long time and up until that point I considered her my friend and I felt that she had really really disrespected me because he was the one who told me It's just so crazy to me that someone would throw away a friendship of that length of time to date someone's ex it's so slimy and gross and anyway I told him what I felt about the situation and her I, I made that vlog and I was like hey just so you know I talked about this in the vlog and he blocked me no response he had left me on red but not just over the messenger he also blocked me on Instagram where I was not following him and then she blocked me where I was not following her I had just unfollowed and she unfollowed me back these blocks were done completely out of spite neither of them wanted to talk to me especially her the last time I had heard from her was actually I think a year before he told me that they were dating she invited me to her house in a I'm not gonna specify any names or any locations, nothing. I'm just gonna be a bit vague in certain areas. She had asked me to come make art with her in the place where she lived. It was in Eastern Ontario. And I was like, sure. And then she never responded after that. So it was like, Okay, I guess this isn't happening. My The show I was working on was actually on hiatus. I really do look bald, don't I? Whatever, I don't care. Um, so I could have gone, but she didn't respond. And by the way, she calls herself an artist. I've seen her art and I've never liked it. So I'm like, what would we have made? Like something that looks like the pedestrian amateur shit that she does. Like it looks like bad fan art, a 16 year old Drew. I'm sorry, it's the truth. So that's what happened after I had made the vlog. They both blocked me on a social media site that I was not following either of them and I had already told him you know actually I don't want to hear from her stating that I don't want to talk to her and you know what I've actually <laughs> sent a link to a friend and she said the exact same thing that I had said without watching my vlog because she was like well what's going on <laughs> I kind of unloaded on her and I sent her the girl's link and this is what she had to say say about her. OMG, she's got nothing on you. She looks old, number one, and she's ugly, number two, and she dresses like a grandma, number three, and you're super beautiful. She's not. Sometimes I don't get... So that's what my friend said. So it's things that I had said, so I wasn't talking out of my ass. I had shown another friend of mine on Safari, her Instagram, and she actually grabbed my phone and she clicked on a picture and she was like, that's her and I was like yeah and she's like she looks really old every one of my friends have said she looks really old like it's not something that I was saying because I was bitter it's the truth so basically I got left on red and blocked for expressing how I felt as harsh as it was you know what they were complete assholes to me and here's what I think happened so I had mentioned he played a show and he ended up not inviting me to it with the excuse that oh I just posted the flyer like Okay, I'm not following you on Instagram and we're not friends on Facebook, so maybe you should have like given me the word so I could have decided if I wanted to go. But now I'm thinking the reason he didn't want me there was because she was coming. I have a feeling that they started talking months before and he didn't say anything to me and I don't know what his attraction, this new attraction to her was because in the over a decade that she was around, he never once showed a passing interest in this girl. And she is com like a complete step down from what he usually dated. I'm not saying that I'm a 
supermodel or the best looking person in the world, but I can tell you that I'm a lot better looking than her and seeing other girls that he's dated, they're also a lot better looking than her and it, uh, it just doesn't make sense. And that's why I said it's probably to get validation because she's a fan. She's the last fan that would want to date him. And you know what? I've seen a picture of him recently and he does not look good. They have that same bad attitude and bad ideas that will throw away friendships and treat people like shit. You know what? This is in no way a compliment. They're both fucking ugly. I said I was in love with the guy. Yeah, it was never about his looks. It was about the chemistry between us. With everything, all those negatives, not a compliment, but maybe they deserve each other. You know what I mean? Like it's probably gonna be so wonderful in the honeymoon stages, but what happens down the road when the fandom fades? So what I think happened was they started talking. He invited her to the show. Didn't want me there because he didn't want me to see that they were scheming. I understand my ex, he can date whoever the hell he wants. My friend can date whoever the hell she wants to, but I would have liked to have the fucking heads up and I would have liked her to have the fucking courage to tell me, you know, and she didn't. That's what makes me so angry is the fact that she said nothing to me and she just straight out stopped talking to me because she had a fucking crush on my ex. Like it's so fucking stupid. Anyway, what I think happened is she came to the show and I feel like they hooked up afterwards and that's when they started dating. Even still, the show would have been in like March, so March, April, May, June. It took them, what, four months to tell me? Like, come on. So having emotions and feeling betrayed gets me blocked and makes me the bad guy. Okay, whatever. And you know what I saw? I saw a video from the show that he didn't invite me to and they sounded horrible. Now I want to go back and discuss the relationship, what happened, and red flag, starting off with this major one. And I think about this today and it just irks me to no end. Like, it makes me want to puke because it's so fucking disgusting. We were on the subway and we had been out drinking all night. So I was drunk and he was drunk and blah blah blah. There were two girls that were on this subway and I remember introducing myself to them and then I sat on his lap. And then we got home or the next day, I don't remember, he was like, oh you shouldn't have done that. And I'm there thinking like, what do you mean I shouldn't have done that? Like, sit on your lap? He was my boyfriend. I could have sat on his lap if I wanted to, you know what I mean? I wasn't being showy or anything. And then he said it's because he was trying to date that girl. I don't remember who sent the friend request. It might have been me, might have been her, I don't know. But we became friends on MySpace. I just wanted things to be cool because I didn't want to be hated and I didn't want her to feel alienated or anything like that. And then one day she, was, she messaged me saying that she had just turned 16. At this time, my ex would have been 24 or 25 and considering she had just turned 16, it means he was trying to date her when she was only 15 years old. When I heard this, I was kind of like, what the fuck? Like, that's gross. Did he know? And I remember sitting on the couch with him and I was just like, um, she just told me she's 16. As in, she just turned 16. And he wasn't like, what? Or anything? And this is after he told me that he was trying to date her and she would always change the subject or something like that. He didn't say anything. He just sat there. He went fucking white. Like he got caught. I had said, you know, maybe he didn't know. Giving him the benefit of the doubt. I had mentioned this to a guy friend of mine and he was like, no, he knew. If he didn't know, he would have been like, what the fuck? Blah, blah, blah. Like he would have reacted like, oh my God, really? And he just went, so he knew that he was trying to date a 15 year old when he was well into his fucking 20s. That's disgusting. Like trying to date a child. That's so gross. And it was such a turn off when I heard about it, but I guess it was good that I was dating him. So he left her alone. And this brings me to the scandal that I had mentioned that his band went through. It happened mid-tour, they were dropped by everybody, all the shows were cancelled, a former bandmate had released a statement against one of the guys in the band, not my ex, that he was abusive towards her and also that she was really young when he started pursuing her, like 14, 15 years old and the guy was like in his 30s or late 20s or something. When I heard the news, I didn't doubt that it was true and the fact that my ex was also dealing with 15 year olds tells me it's 100% true. Almost exactly a year before this statement was put out, I had received a message from an account on Instagram asking me questions, what I knew about the guy who the statement was against, and then asked me if I had ever experienced that with 
my ex. So I knew something was going on. And then on the topic of bands, soon after we started dating, his band went on a small tour of California. He invited me down. So I went on tour basically to help sell the merch and take video of them performing. I wasn't filming at this point, but while they were filming at some house party, he was caught on tape and we were, I heard this when we were reviewing, so we're watching it together. He had called me a princess. When I had heard this, I was like, oh, hmm, snuggling, like thinking, oh, I'm a princess. He stopped and was like, that's not a compliment. And I also had found out that at one of the shows they played, apparently this is when he met this former Seventeen magazine model that was one of the reasons for the final breakup. And I will get to that later on in the vlog. But yeah, just like, I thought that was so rude. It's just being like, he was obviously talking shit about me on camera. And when I heard it and I was like, oh, princess, he was like, that's a compliment. Like... Soon after that, the first breakup happened, and do I know why? Not really. I was kind of stressed out because he wasn't giving me things that I needed, but he wasn't even trying to make things better, and this was a running theme throughout our relationship. I remember him like nitpicking at me, and I would not know what I really did. Did I really do anything? No. He just, I don't know, he had issues. Yeah, so the first breakup happened, but the problem is I had fallen in love with him. We were still basically on good terms, trying to be friends, but because I was in love with the guy, that was difficult for me. I told him how I felt. I remember we were hanging out a lot, and then one night, we were laying in bed in the dark, and it would go silent, one of us would say something, and then it would go silence again, and someone else would say something, so it was back and forth like that, and then he was like, I want to touch you, can I touch you? And I was like, yeah, and then we had great makeup sex and then we started getting back together. I went over once and noticed that the bed was full of like clumps of dried out bleach blonde hair. And it wasn't mine because my hair was more of a brown reddish color. And I remember going into the bathroom. I didn't have to move anything in the trash to see it, but there was like a mass of fucking used condoms. Instead of seeing that as a red flag, you don't have like wild romps with other people when you're trying to rekindle a relationship. I'm sorry you don't do that. And instead of seeing that as the red flag that that it was, I bleached my hair. Like I was so in love with this guy, I saw that and instead of saying, okay, this is, I'm not gonna do this, I bleached my freaking hair. So if I saw it again, I could say, oh, that's just my hair. And that is so fucking embarrassing to me. And it's something, I, I wouldn't do that today. If I saw that, I would be out the door so fast. I'd be like, you know what, fuck you, I'm done. I had also found out, cause some people, when they find out that you're dating somebody and you've been aggressively flirting with them, sometimes Sometimes people don't like it and the information gets back to you. I had found out that throughout the relationship, he was constantly talking to girls online behind my back, flirting with them. And you know what, this information always comes back to the person either years later or while it's happening for the simple fact that, you know, a lot of people don't like cheaters. so. During that break, I'd also gotten into Playboy. And I feel that one of the reasons why we got back together was the fact that I was becoming a Playboy model. There was one night where he got super, super drunk and he was bragging to people that he was dating a Playboy model because he called me and he didn't jump in a cab. He didn't get on the TTC. He tried to walk home and couldn't find his way home and he kept calling me, telling me, I'm so cold and blah, 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 and there's this and that and bragging to random people, I'm dating a playable model. One couple that I heard him say it to was like, oh, lucky girl. Anyway, so like roll it back to when we got back together. Things were good for a while. And then it was little things. And it was like he never wanted to work things out. And when there was a problem, he would never tell me there was a problem until he would explode. We had moved to do a loft. And I remember I had a dresser and I was like, oh, you can use these drawers. He bought a clothing rack and I was not even allowed 
allowed to hang anything, not one thing on it. And there were shelves and I wasn't allowed to put anything on the shelves. Like I would have a little space on the shelf so I had nowhere to put my things when he was using half my dresser. And the stuff that didn't fit anywhere, I would it wasn't strewn all over the place, but it would be in a pile or whatever and I would put it on a table or I would put it by a pillar or something. Like, cause I had nowhere to put this stuff. He wouldn't tell me that it bothered him until he blew up at me. And he was like, mm, this pile there, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, where am I supposed to put it? You know, you're making this impossible for me. Where am I supposed to put these things? Just like stupid nitpicky things like that. This one time he was doing crunches on a fucking ab roller. When he would like come up, I was giving him a little kiss. Just like a little kiss on his forehead or something. Just being stupid, silly, whatever. And I didn't know it was bothering him because he didn't say anything. And then he stopped and was like, BANG! I'm trying to work out! Like, not even laughing, not even, you know, he made me feel so fucking stupid, right? Like, I think one of the things that started it, it was New Year's, I think, before, yeah, it was the New Year's before the final breakup happened. Um, we went to a friend's place and the night started fine or whatever. We all got our champagne and I remember I was sipping the champagne and I was eating little quiche. This was before I knew I was sulfide intolerant. Anyway, there's a, I remember there's a picture of me and you can tell that I'm not feeling good. I'm kind of looking at the camera like, because I felt like shit and I didn't know why. Quiche high in sulfites, champagne very high in sulfites and I didn't realize I was having a sulfite reaction. What happens when I have a sulfite reaction, it causes severe intestinal cramping. You feel like you have to throw up, you feel like you have to mm, go to the bathroom, but it just sits there, nothing happens. <laughs> And basically what happens after that, I get like a migraine, my entire body starts hurting. So it's like all my muscles start to cramp up and this is what was happening to me. And I tried drinking water and nothing made it better. The person whose house it was just put me into a room and was like, you can sleep. I was in too much pain to sleep. And not once did my ex check to see if I was okay. And I found out later it's because he thought it was lying. I'm there in excruciating pain, having a reaction to something I did didn't know I was intolerant to and he thinks that I'm lying. It had gotten super super late and I could hear that they were still playing music in the basement and I walked out of the room and I noticed and this actually includes the friend who is now dating him so she saw this and I actually messaged her saying like this is who he really is and she ignored the message or she left me on red I don't remember and after that she didn't speak to me for a long time and then out of nowhere on Instagram she sent me a message to send me new pictures she had taken I'm like you have not responded to me you didn't say anything about that situation when I was going through a crisis with the guy yeah I get so sidetracked I'm like time one story and I'm gonna go back to the New Year's story how the night ended but the nude she had sent I was like damn girl and then I looked at the picture again like I opened it and noticed that she had a tail hanging from her fucking butt cheeks so she had done these nudes where a furry tail butt plug <clears throat> mm, that's like a step above just shooting nude like anyway <laughs> so she sent me those pictures and then she had invited me to visit her and then she said nothing to me and then she started dating my ex anyway <laughs> So that girl was there, and I remember she was sitting by the door, I guess super drunk, but she was obviously tired. My ex was driving us home, and with everybody waiting by the door in their jackets, that tells me that they already said, okay, we're leaving, and he was like, okay. And they were saying like, oh, he's still downstairs. So tired, I wanna go home, and I'm thinking, how come you guys aren't saying anything? And I was so mad that he didn't check up on me at all. I went down in the basement, and he's on the drums, and I remember going in front of the drums, and I was like, there are, everybody's waiting up by the door. Like, it's so late. I was the bad guy. And while we were driving home, that's when I finally threw up. He didn't believe me until I handed him the bag full of my fucking vomit. Like, he didn't believe that I was actually sick. Who would lie about not feeling well at a New Year's Eve party? Like, I just wanted to have fun with everybody else, but I couldn't because I was so ill and in so much pain, and he did not believe me. During the relationship, he would say that he always wanted a second girlfriend, or if we were gonna get married, he'd want a second wife. There was one night he was like, oh babe, I'm gonna marry you one day, da da da. And then the very next Next day, he said, oh, I think I told you too much. Like, I think back to that relationship and 
it was like he had a set of rules that I was supposed to follow and he had things that I was allowed to say and I wasn't allowed to say but he wouldn't tell me what the rules were or what those things were that I could say like he would never disclose what it was and if I violated this like secret rules I was the bad guy and oh my god you're such a horrible person let me go email another girl on my space and nearing the end of the relationship he was getting distant his blow-ups became more frequent I never knew what I was doing wrong we we weren't even having sex then I started saying like do you still love me and he would say don't be silly and then I'd be like do you still want to be in this relationship and he would always like don't be silly, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't asking him because I was trying to cause drama. I knew something was up. The final breakup happened a week before my birthday. We were supposed to go on a little, you know, mini trip down to Niagara Falls. But right before that, he was going on tour. To be quite frank, at this point, after all of this, I wanted to, like, I didn't want to be in a relationship with him anymore. I wanted to ask him for a break. I was going to do it, like, two weeks after my birthday. But he decided to break up with me a week before my birthday. And the reason why I wanted to go on a break is because he was seeking out all my imperfections. It was like he was waiting for me to say something wrong or do something wrong by his definition. And I was such the bad guy, blah, blah, blah. The lighting's changed in this clip, but I forgot to explain what the final breakup was like. Basically that day we went out and we were walking around and I remember he was walking really fast so I was having trouble keeping up with him at one point he stopped turned around and was like babe can you keep up I feel like I own you turned around and stormed off and I was kind of taken aback by it and I was like okay something's up that added a bit of tension i think he's, he was walking so fast so like i was literally trying to keep up with him dodging people and he was just like storming through the crowd like um and then i think we went to get food and there is that familiar look that he gave me before the first breakup and it was kind of like this pained expression like and how he did the breakup. We were watching TV. He was like, Pamela. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, need to talk. And he was like, I'm not happy. And then I said, do you not want to be in this relationship? And he said, no. And I remember feeling really, really numb. Like I wanted to cry, but I couldn't. And then I remember him grabbing me and giving me a hug and just like trying to push him away. And he was like, no. And like, it's really, really bloody awkward. So that's what the second breakup was like really soon after that happened he went on this tour the breakup was really convenient because the model that i had mentioned earlier on in this vlog was there and i know this because the first thing i would do when he got back from tour i would always look at the pictures on his camera and this time he went to go into the shower and then he stopped and was like oh um i'll show you the pictures later and i was like okay the door closed i was like Pfft. And I opened the pocket where the camera usually was and the camera wasn't in there. It was a three pack of condoms. I opened the box and there was only two in there. So I knew that he had hooked up with somebody merely what, two days after fucking stomping all over my fucking heart. <laughs> so then I knew, okay, I, I need to see these pictures because there's something in there that he doesn't want me to see. I had asked him questions about this girl previously and this is another red flag. If you were dating someone and they constantly talk about someone and brag about what they're doing in their life, it could be a sign that they have a crush on them. When it seems like it's crossing the line of friendship, there's a good chance that it might be just that. And if your intuition is saying something's going on, something's going on, something probably is. I'm talking about like, oh, she's doing this, she's doing that, blah, blah, blah. If they talk about the person all the time to an excessive degree. So I found the camera, I went through the pictures and came across photos where it was in a hotel room and it was people hanging out together and she was there. And then one of the photos was of her sitting on his laptop. The picture was taken from behind her and you could see her face in a mirror. It looked like he was taking pictures of her from a bed. So it looked like their friend left, she was still there and he took a picture of it of like flirty like um, Kent's bed and missing condom tells me that he finally had sex with her and I put everything back in his bag and pretend I didn't see anything did it work out with them no and he later told me that she was a snob I had looked at her social media and she had posted something if you are dating somebody and you hit on me I'm gonna tell your girlfriend and I was thinking well honey 
He was obviously dating me, how come you said nothing? Anyway, so I saw those pictures. He put them on his computer and was like, if you wanna look at the pictures, they're on the computer now. So I was going through them and I saw that in the recycling bin, there was stuff in it. So I clicked them, there were the pictures of her. So he hid them from me when he should have just been honest. You know what I mean? He had already broken up with me. Like, why was this still a secret? I think he dumped me because he wanted to have sex with her finally because he had this huge crush on her that I knew about. He wasted my time. That's time I'm never gonna get back. Did I meet people that I was interested in while I was dating him? Yeah. Did I pursue anything with them? No. During this time period where he was not in my life at all, I would get updates on him. I remember I went out with friends and this random guy came up to me and he was like, oh, hey, Pamela. And I was like, hey. And I started talking to him, but he immediately he started telling me everything about my ex and he was like oh yeah I was just a and I stayed with him and his girlfriend oh and I went to his house and blah 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 and like just like unloaded all this information about him on me and I was thinking are you his messenger like what is the fuck is going on who the hell are you and why are you giving me information it was so irritating I felt like I was being haunted by the guy and then he sent me a friend's request but didn't say anything I accepted it out of curiosity and he started dating some girl from Florida and he plastered his profile with pictures of her and and just like all this stuff. Then a few months after that, all those pictures were gone, so I guess they broke up. And I, I thought for a little while, is this just an extra dig at me? After all these years, he's gonna come back into my life to be like, to just show off? Cause he was never like that with me. I sent him a message being like, um, Hey, and then we started talking again. Anyway, things were going really well, and then I started having issues with my work. Really, really stressed out times, and then I started having problems with a friend. I had mentioned her in my Robin Williams vlog. I fell out with her, and then a few months later, I got the news that she had died, and for a little while, like, I didn't know why, and I was talking to him about it. I think he's one of the first person I told. For months, I didn't know that she had committed suicide. I thought it was either a suicide or an overdose or something along those lines. He knew exactly what I was like dealing with. And then a poster for a very popular California music festival was posted and his band's name was on the list. I sent him a message as soon as I saw it saying, if you can get passes, I would love to go. He didn't say yes or no. He gave me the whole spiel about how like saying like, I don't know if I can get guest list, which I know is bullshit because I have a lot of friends in the music industry. If they play a show, they get guest lists, they get plus ones for their friends, they get passes and stuff. And they weren't at the bottom of the list, they were I think in the third row. So there's no way that they didn't get passes. Instead of telling me, oh, I've already promised them to other people, but I had asked like immediately after I saw the announcement. Anyway, so the girl had, that had disappeared from his account started popping up again like a month before. And I remember talking to a friend of mine saying, I hope he's not taking her because I asked and I don't think they were friends. And guess what? The festival rolled around and pictures popped up and that girl was there. And I had messaged him saying like, oh, did you take that girl? And he blew up at me. And I was like, I thought you said you couldn't get passes. And he was like, I can give the passes to whoever I want. Blah, 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 blah. So like, he just didn't want me there. He should have been clear with that. And then the other weekend, he took someone who I found out later was super rich and could have paid for the passes herself. I just figured with what I was going through, it was a really, really horrible time in my life. I needed a distraction. He knew that I needed a distraction. And instead of giving me a straight up no, he gave me an excuse and he lied to me about it. But even still, if the situation was reversed, if I knew someone who was going through hell with their job and then lost their job and then lost a friend to suicide, I wouldn't give them any excuses. I would be honest if the passes were already taken, but if the passes were available, I would turn around and give them to someone I dated for four months instead of someone I'm trying to make amends with who is going through all that stuff. I don't know, maybe he thought that he was gonna get laid or something. Of course there was gonna be tension with us because he was my ex, I never fully got closure. And I don't think it was too much to ask, I really, really don't. And the way he reacted was just completely out of line. I remember he blew up at me again about something and he was like, 
like, oh, maybe this is a waste of time, blah, blah. And I was like, waste of time. And then he said, I never said it was a waste of time. And he had done this to me before where he would say something and then I would ask him about it and then he would deny saying it. And he was like, as long as you say nice things and do nice things and be nice to me, we can be friends. So it was like completely dependent on me being a fucking doormat. You know what I mean? This time around, I screenshot it, circled it in yellow, sent it back to him and I was like, don't treat me like this. He didn't like that I sent him the screenshots disproving what he had just said. And then he immediately said, this is a waste of time. And then he gave me like three months of the silent treatment and then messaged me again, I guess to apologize. Things were still cool, we became friends. And then this weekend happened. I had originally only meant to go over to print things, but we ended up hanging out all day, drinking until sunrise, and I had a horrible hangover, stayed there that day. And during that hangover, we were laying on the couch and I was really freaking sick. And he reaches down and starts groping my boobs. And I remember looking up into him saying, I'm too sick. And then he stopped the next day because I stayed over again because that's how hungover I was. And it was also like 40 degrees outside. So I stayed over again and that day was finally feeling better. And I remember we were laying in bed together and he did it again. So he went down and he started groping my boobs. I didn't, like I don't know why. I didn't stop him this time. I guess I was curious. And then he took, you know, the groping elsewhere and I thought it was just gonna go there like I didn't think it was gonna go any further than that and he didn't even ask if that was okay and I was thinking the entire time like what the hell is happening like what is going on and I remember he just kind of rolled over and then it went as far as it can go you know what I mean and there was things that were different about him that were it was, I was just like mm. Before that, and it was before the thing with his band ended, he had asked me to meet up with him while I was in town, and I did. And went to, to dinner with him and like a mutual friend and crew guys from the tour. And then he was like, do you want to go back to the hotel room and watch movies? And I was like, okay, sure. While we were watching the movie, he reached down and grabbed my hand. And I was like, okay. And he just like was holding my hand and my heart was like fluttering a little bit. Stupid. And then he wanted me to kiss him and I just kind of kissed him on the cheek. So that was one thing that happened almost at the beginning of this reunion. And this happened before the thing with my job and my friend and the festival. I forgot to mention that. Going back, the hookup happened two years ago. And I had mentioned in the MIA vlog that it wasn't that long ago that stuff had happened between us. That's what I was referring to. I was here thinking, I guess things are happening. Like, I guess fairy tales do come true. Like, my head was screaming at me, no, but my heart was like, yes, yes, yes. And I was even thinking about, you know, do I really want to be in a relationship with somebody who just seeks out fucking drama, who, like, creates problems and won't let you speak and blah, 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 and all this stuff? Like, do I really want to be with someone? And my heart was like, yes, you love him. My head was like, no. And I was also thinking, like, what would my friends say? And then I was like, fuck what my friends say, blah, blah, blah. And I'm getting so tired talking about this. I tried to record this last week and I got so exhausted. Sorry, this is so long, guys. Um, and then again after that, I said the wrong thing and he stopped talking to me again. But this time, he sent me a message and he basically said he didn't like I had dealt with things and all this jazz. And oh, before I had mentioned hooking up and stuff like that. And then he sent me this big long message about how he's always been attracted to me. And if I had given him another chance, he'd be such a lucky man and blah, blah, blah. He sent me messages like this. It's no wonder I got the wrong impression. Anyway, so after getting this silent treatment again, he sent me a message saying that he wanted to apologize, but he wanted to do it face to face. Finally found some time. I I had gone over to his house and he apologized to me. He took responsibility for everything. And I remember at one point I was like, well, I guess I'm gonna take responsibility for my part in it. And he was like, no, no, it's all me. So he took the blame 100%. But still, you know, he was talking to me a lot and then he went silent. I think this is when they started dating and I started getting the messages shorter and shorter and shorter. And he started dating someone who I thought was friends. So I said that completely weird, sorry. 
So that's my story about what happened with my ex. A lot of that I don't think anyone should really deal with. Like if you're in a relationship with somebody, it's you, you work together, you make sure things are right, you communicate with each other, and if someone doesn't want to communicate, then why are you together? You know, I didn't feel ready to make this vlog, but honestly, who is ever ready to talk about stuff like this? Kind of embarrassing for me, shameful for him. Just saying, like, if you're not into somebody, don't waste their time. Don't be in a relationship with them to pass the time. Don't lie. Be honest. Be transparent. If something makes somebody uncomfortable, don't keep doing it. If something is bothering you, speak up. Don't put unfair expectations on other people, especially when they don't know that they've done something wrong. If someone isn't doesn't know that they're messing up, because you never tell them, how are they supposed to not mess up? It's kind of setting them up so that they mess it up so you have an excuse to end something or blame somebody else. And I, f I felt like he did a lot of, you know, instead of looking in the mirror, like... The story is now released into the wind. It's out into the interweb. If anything is really familiar to you guys, pay attention to the red flags, even if they seem small. If someone belittles you and they're wasting your time and they're not honest with you, etc., that's not a relationship you want to be in. There's probably someone out there who's going to treat you like gold. You don't have to stay with somebody just because you love them because what is love if it's not returned to you? What is love without a good relationship? I'm going to end this now. It's already way too long. Thanks for watching.